Welcome to Commando on Demand Insider with Kim Commando, your fast-paced weekly update straight from Kim's desk to your ears. I'm Mike James. And in just a bit, we are really privileged today to have the leader of T-Mobile's consumer group with us. His name is John Fryer, and he's the executive vice president of the consumer markets at T-Mobile in charge of 18,000-plus stores, over 100,000 employees, which in turn generates over $50 billion in annual revenue. Kim is going to talk with John in just a few moments about how they've shifted their focus recently with COVID. And we're uh, wrapping up Military Appreciation Month and talking about how T-Mobile is supporting the military and the military personnel, not only this month, but also year-round. So that's coming up in just a few. And Kim answers a couple of questions about programming in a language called COBOL, which is an old language that you'd be surprised how useful it is these days. And what would you do if you kept getting calls to your phone asking for Elon Musk? It happened, and the answer of this particular lady is going to surprise you. And if you've ever wondered if the information you give your bank is safe, and what about auto pay and some of the digital options that banks have now? How safe is it? We'll ask him. And by the way, this is not the nationally syndicated Kim Commando show on over 400 radio stations nationwide and worldwide on American Forces Radio. Uh, every ship at sea gets the Kim Commando show. The podcast version of the show is available at GetKim.com. And right now, you'll get a 30-day free trial if you use promo code Kim. So again, go to GetKim.com. Get on the Commando community so you can listen to the podcast and much more. Just use promo code Kim for your free 30-day trial. All right. The leader of T-Mobile's consumer division is coming up in just a bit on Commando On Demand Insider. You're in for such a treat. Joining us for just a few moments is John Fryer, T-Mobile's executive vice president of consumer markets. He has full P&L responsibility for the T-Mobile Consumer Group, leading over 18,000 stores and more than 110,000 employees across all T-Mobile U.S. consumer brands and products, generating $500 billion in annual revenues. Hey, John, thanks for being here. When COVID-19 hit, businesses really had to pivot. And in your case, wow, 80% of your retail stores were temporarily closed. I read in the Wall Street Journal that your team developed an app in a matter of days to keep your retail services going. Okay, how was that possible? Yeah, um, it, yeah this COVID-19 situation has been just truly unprecedented for, you know, many businesses across the entire country. And, and we certainly were not immune to that whatsoever. And, um, you know, like you said, we had up to 80% of our stores closed um, right after the, you know, right after the mid part of, of March. And what we were needing to do is, is as we thought about, you know, safely reopening some of our stores at the very beginning of April and then having more of our stores open out, open up throughout the month of April and into May, we needed to think about, you know, workforce scheduling and be thinking about who was available to work. And, um, and it, we didn't have quite the, the, the information on our people's, um, you know, devices that could tell us in real time, one, are they safe? Two, are they available to work? Three, if they were available to work, what, what might that look like? And, you know, so what we did is, you know, had this app and our team really developed this app to be able to um, have employees load this app on their phone and be able to communicate in real time back to us on what their status was. Um, if they were able to, um, you know, come in and be able to drive in or be able to commute in, and if they were willing to work or, you know, possibly, you know, some people had um, those that are higher risk in their homes, like, you know, possibly a, a, a parent with, um, you know, underlying conditions or uh, possibly an elderly grandparent. And, you know, some of those employees weren't, you know, able to, you know, come back just yet or weren't able to work at that particular point in time. And, you know, we were able to get that information just as quickly as we possibly could so we can put together a workforce management plan that allowed people to safely return into the workplace and, and be able to stay in constant contact with, uh, you know, with T-Mobile. Well, I'll tell you, it's really amazing. And it's so great that, you know, to take into consideration, it's not just the employee, but, you know, who's in the household and what's going on there. And, you know, in preparation for this, uh, for this talk, I looked you up. I did, a, I did a little background check, I'll tell you, John. <laughs> okay. And um, you've accomplished so much, such a stellar career. I just want to ask you, before we talk about the military, um, 
What traits are most important that you think for a, a business leader to have right now, especially during times like this? Yeah, um, yeah. I've been I've been a part of T-Mobile for gosh twenty twenty six years now since since nineteen ninety four. Um, I started doing this when I was um, my first year in college. Um, you know, I started. Uh, you know, I got into this industry and I just kind of fell into this industry. I got my first sales job and. This is when everybody had beepers and no one had a cell phone and everybody had a landline phone. And um, I was going around, you know, selling door to door and leaving my business card on pay phones. And, and, you know, before you know it, 26 years later, I'm leading a, a big portion of the, of the company here. And it's just been an incredible company and an incredible career. But what I would tell you is I look back, you know, at, at, at my history and, and, you know, even, even amplified during this crisis that we've had here, which is just this, um, the spirit to um, look out for others and where you want to look out for others and be able to help others. Uh, I've got this, um, I, I've never served in the military, but I, I've got this, you know, this desire to help other people and to um, lead other people and to help them do whatever they want to do in their own lives. And as I, you know, kind of looked through over the last six weeks or so, you know, I saw people panicked in ways that I've never seen in my entire career. And I saw people needing leadership and needing to be told it's going to be okay and needing to, you know, be inspired about, you know, um, about the promises of tomorrow, even in the, you know, crisis of today. And, you know, for me, I just, um, I really leaned into some of the leadership skills that I built here, which is, you know, strong communication. Um, you're really having a positive outlook, really making sure that we're taking care of the immediate needs, kind of food, water, shelter today, um, making sure that we're doing anything and everything that we can do for all of our employees, um, making sure that we have business continuity or compensation continuity for all of our employees, uh, making sure that, you know, we're taking all the kinds of actions that we need to take to keep, you know, all of our employees and our retail stores, you know, continue to be employed and not laid off or not furloughed, which we haven't done one layoff or one furlough in our retail stores. And, well, you know, for great. me, it's just, you know, when, when, you, when you have, when you have, you know, times are going good, you, you really, you know, you, you, you build these leadership skills and, and then, you know, they're, they're really on this full display when you have a crisis. And I got to tell you, for me, um, uh, what, what inspired me as a leader is our team and our team that just was, like I said, people were scared, people were fearful, but man, people had just such a can-do spirit. And we're here to, you know, continue to come to work, to continue to help people stay connected to their loved ones, to their family, to their, um, to their, you know, to their work, their place of work, or even to their physicians if they had a, you know, a, a loved one that, you know, might be um, ill at home. Um, and it's it just, for me, I just saw just an, an incredible amount of, you know, people just rolling up their sleeves and figuring out things. And you, you don't turn to page you know, 842 in a handbook and, and look up, you know, <laughs> what are you doing a pandemic, right? You just don't do yeah. that. And I, I just really leaned on our team. And uh, I tell you, um, as much as um, our team would, would tell you that maybe I, I did some good things for them, but I would tell you that uh, my team did more good things for me during that particular point in time. Well, I'll tell you, it's, that's very inspiring to hear because as a business owner myself, certainly I don't have nearly the number of employees that you're dealing with, but it, uh, it was challenging. I mean, and you're right. I mean, it's not on page 882 of any MBA book that you could ever read. I mean, how do you move forward and how do you keep people happy? And, and like you stressed, uh, you know, communication is key. Communication with your employees, your managers, your staff, your family and to keep everything going. And a big part of that family is the military. And I've always believed, and I'm, I've never served, my father did. And But when a serviceman or woman, when they get deployed or they enlist, it's just not them. It's their entire family. You know, their entire family is involved. And it's so great to know that T-Mobile is so supportive of our military. What's the greatest part of this that you feel? Yeah, I, I think you're exactly right in terms of it's not just that one person, it's the entire family. And, you know, that's what we're trying to create at T-Mobile, which is um, someone that has served or continues to be a part of uh, the National Guard or the Reserves, you know, being a part of that family. And, you know, having, having their employer at T-Mobile be an extension um, of their family. And um, th that's exactly why we have, you know, one of the diversity and inclusion networks that we have at T-Mobile 
which is our Veterans and Allies Network. Like you, I've never served either. I've never, I've never served in the military. I never had that um, good fortune uh, to be able to do that. But you know, I'm, I'm a student of the military. I'm a student of those who have served um, and those who have come back and trying to enter into civilian life after they depart the military service. And, and this diversity and inclusion network that we have, Kim, is, is 11,000 people that are strong. Um, and it's made up of veterans from all the armed forces and made up of people like you and I that are allies um, to those right. veterans. And, you know, what we're trying to do is just make sure that we can create an environment within our company that allows the veterans to do their very best work because they have so much to provide. And, you know, sadly, what happens here is that when they leave the service, it's, you know, 53 percent of military experience, unemployment within 15 months of leaving their, um, their uh, branch of service, 53% unemployment, unbelievable when you think about the transition from the service and into you know, civilian life. And we try to play a role with that. And we try to look at um, where, wherever we can help because there's incredible skill sets that military um, servicemen and women have that we have found that um, you know, really make our company better and make our business better. And wherever we can, we're trying to reach out and help and drive that divide that exists out there in America. So what kind of positions do you fill when you start looking at this, uh, at these various programs? Yeah, it, it really arranges all across the board because as I, as I think about um, military servicemen and women who um, work here, God, they're, they're, in, they're in all kinds of different positions. Um, first of all, That's- you see a number of people in, in retail positions or in retail management positions, also in customer care, uh, in customer care uh, management positions. We have um, a number of our um, customer experience centers throughout the country that you know, are, are typically in smaller communities. And um, there's, there's a lot of you know, people that live you know, in smaller communities that have been part of the uh, military. And so we see a lot of that there. Also in our headquarters functions, we have a number of people that um, you know, across every single one of our departments, whether it be finance or corporate strategy or marketing um, or uh, corporate communications, I can just keep going on and on. Um, and, and, you know, probably one of, one of the largest, you know, areas where we see a lot of uh, servicemen and women um, do work for us here at T-Mobile is in engineering and in network. We have a lot of people in IT roles and technology roles within the military coming out of that and being able to do great work on our network and great work in our products and technology organization. We see a lot of interest from uh, from uh, veterans in those particular fields. And again, you know, we've had a lot of people that are doing that work within our particular field. This, see, this is all great stuff because my show not only airs on, say, 400 stations across the United States, but also, I, and I love this, 177 different countries. And every ship at sea gets the Kim Commando show. Um, so you, we're talking directly to these folks right now. Um, who's eligible for the, say, the T-Mobile Magenta Military or the Military Plus plans? Yeah, I'm glad you raised that. We, we, um, we unveiled this, um, you know, almost two years ago now. Um, and uh, it's been, it's, uh, let's see, no, it was, yeah, it's been about two years ago now. I, it kind of escapes me. These, these um, time periods run together from time to time. <laughs> but um, it's uh, 50% off of family plans which is our biggest military discount that we've ever seen in the history of wireless. And when, who gets to qualify for this is people that are in the active military, um, people who are veterans, people who are part of the National Guard, people who are uh, in the reserves. Um, they, them, they and their families qualify. So uh, if you take uh, you know, your average you know, plan of, um, of uh, you know, four lines, and you know, that, that can be as low as $25 per line, $100 for the entire family for, um, for you know, being a part of the military, serving today in the military, or certainly being a veteran of the military. And it's the strongest discount that we've ever provided. Um, we took a look at this you know, when we decided to do this, and you know, we, were, we were thinking about doing something that was you know, like 25%, um, and then, you know, we just said, hey, you know, that's just not big enough. It's not good enough. And, you know, we're passionate at T-Mobile to serve those who are serving or those who have served. And we looked at it and said, you know what, we've done a few things that are big, bigger than that. And for the military, it should be the biggest discount we've ever done. And that's exactly what we went and did is put the biggest discount 
that we have ever done in the company and that the wireless industry has ever seen off of its normal rate plan. And we put that right there for those that serve this great country of ours. Yeah, and and that's just awesome. We've been talking about it because May is Military Appreciation Month, but your appreciation, T-Mobile's appreciation of the military goes beyond just May, right? It does. It's all year long for us. Um, you know, this is, it's not one of those things where, oh, okay, it's May, let's do the Military Appreciation Month. No, it's, it's all year. Um, and because we, we do several different things throughout the year. We have, like I said just a few moments ago, we have our um, Veterans and Allies Network within the company. 11,000 T-Mobile employees are a part of that diversity and inclusion network within our company. Um, we're doing things in um, you know, the month of November for Veterans Day. We've been a huge sponsor of the Veterans Day Parade in New York City. I personally participated in this in the last couple of years. Last year was the 100th anniversary of that, which is a very beautiful, special moment. What we do on this, Kim, is we take people, veterans that work for us all around the country and bring them into this Veteran Day Parade. And it's not just to do the parade, it's to come together and it's for us to have a conversation about, you know, what's it like to work at T-Mobile as a veteran? You know, where can we be better? What's going well? You know, what can we do differently? How can we attract more veterans to come into, you know, T-Mobile? And, you know, where should we be recruiting people and, and how should we be doing that? And what that does is that drives a whole you know, conversation that, that lasts, you know, you know, way beyond a day or a weekend, you know, lasts for, you know, an entire year and really kind of sets an agenda for us in terms of how we're thinking about um, making the uh, overall culture and the overall work environment better for our veterans for the, for the upcoming year. Um, there's a number of other things that we, you know, try to do every single month with, um, with the Veterans and Allies Network, you know, just trying to stay front and center and making sure that our veterans who work um, at T-Mobile are feeling appreciated. And, and it's not just, you know, one of those, you know, one of those months where it's better, to, uh, excuse me, Military Appreciation Month, but rather we just make sure that they feel appreciated every single day. Because I think so many of us that haven't served, that work for this country, we're in awe of, of those who have served and those who are serving. The sacrifice that um, people are making right now that are in the military, the sacrifice that people have made, um, you know, by serving in the military and might be, you know, out of the military now, it's just incredible. And the least we can do at this company is to keep that service and that sacrifice front of mind every single day and to create a work environment that rewards the contributions of military members and to, you know, keep it front and center too relative to customers that are coming into our stores and, you know, making sure that we are keeping our military discount 50% off front and center so that we can, you know, when, when people are coming in, we can actually talk to them about their service if they want to talk about their service and thank them for their service uh, and then be able to celebrate, you know, their accomplishments in their service and rewarding them with 50% off, 50 off of our normal plans. You know, John, really appreciate you spending time with us and truly for all that T-Mobile is doing to support the great service men and women in, our, in the Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, and Coast Guard. And again, thank you so much. Oh, you bet, Kim. And to everybody that's listening, thank you so much for your service. We can't thank you enough for defending this great country of ours and protecting the freedoms that we hold dear. And I appreciate you having me on, Kim. Thank you very much. Hey, don't forget, if you've got a good question about something digital, you can get Kim's unbiased advice. And it's advice that you can trust. America's digital pro, Kim Commando, and our nationally syndicated radio show. You just go to commando.com, and in the upper right-hand corner, click on the Be a Caller button. We're going to ask you your name and for a couple of details about your question. And then Manny will get in touch with you. We'll set up a time where you can be on the show, ask your question on the show. It is fun. You can call your friends and let them know that you're going to be on the show. And that's, again, the Be a Caller button in the upper right at commando.com. All right, if you know or have heard of a computer language called COBOL, Kim is going to answer the question of why that is actually still a very viable way to make a living. Next on Commando on Demand Insider. Carol in Athens, Georgia is up next. Hi there, Carol. Hey, Kim. I am so excited to talk to you. I can't believe it. Oh, you're here. Thank you. I have listened to you forever, and I never thought I would get to talk to you, so I am so excited. And I have to tell you something real quick. Yes. Until I did my inquiry, I never knew what you look like. You know, I had a picture of you in my mind's eye. 
You are so pretty. You are not a nerd at all. So, so well, thank you. You're so complimentary. Thank you for that. Um, so, what did you? What okay? So, what did you think I looked like? You think it was like like you know, tall, dark I hair. Know. I know, just, you know, brown, a bob, brown hair, bang, <laughs> you know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, well, thank you for finally visiting you're our not, website. You're so pretty. You're so pretty. Well, thank you. <laughs> so um, what's going on, Carol? Okay. I'm going to try and make this quick. I have 27 years experience as a mainframe programmer. I programmed in COBOL and assembler language. Wow. I, you know what? You were on the <laughs> forefront. Thank you. That's what I'm hoping. I, but, 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 I have been out of the field for a while. And you know that even if you're out of the field for an hour, you become a dinosaur. Your skills are obsolete. Yeah, it <laughs> so, happens. So, yeah. So I do not know the new languages like Java and um, um, object oriented. Yeah. Or Ruby or whatever it is. Okay, but okay. you know COBOL. And let me tell you. I do. COBOL is a great skill to have right now at this moment. <laughs> That's um, what I was going to ask you. Yeah, believe it or not, common business-oriented language. I remember learning COBOL in college with the pick statements. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm a nerd. I miss it. I want to get back into programming so bad. <laughs> well, and you can. Um because there has been a call out for people who okay. are COBOL programmers to come out okay. and help. Because, see, a lot of the state's unemployment systems, which, you know, are going crazy right now with the pandemic, uh, were actually written on, in COBOL. And they're okay. trying to find people that can actually That's go to work. what I was going to ask you. I had heard that because of the coronavirus a lot of companies maybe not a lot but some were having to go back to update their old mainframe systems and i wanted to know if that was true and i wanted to know if that was true if you knew how i could get my foot in the door even though i don't know you know the java and the no you can still do it Um, we we actually (laughs) we had a guy on the show not too long ago uh by his name was bill henshaw and he has an outfit out of Plainville, Texas. Plainview, Texas, pardon me. And, okay, I'm writing it down. <laughs> uh, and he's 78 years old. And he has. I'm not that old. I'm uh, not that old. <laughs> well, he, well, I think it's great, though. that And he's rounded up about 350 IT professionals who are COBOL programmers. Yes. <laughs> and he gives them jobs. And um, the name of his outfit is the COBOL Cowboys. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Hey, so I could go anywhere because my son's grown and my husband's in heaven and, um, you know, I can go wherever. <laughs> well, now you're up for an adventure. Now, you know, so give Bill a call and or send him an email. Tell him that you and I spoke, by the way. Uh, okay. And uh, again, because he'll remember being on the show. And then but you can also check, you know, locally what's happening with maybe on Dice.com. I don't know if you never look there. Uh, I do, but the thing is, I'm sorry, I, inter- I am interrupting you. No, the that's thing okay. Is they all want, yes, they want COBOL, um, but they want everything else. Okay. You know, well, then. I don't know. Okay, then, Carol. So you, they say they want, that's what they say they well, want. Well, you know what, so if you've gone to Dice and LinkedIn and Indeed and, you know, all the others, and uh, then, you know what, try the COBOL Cowboys with Bill. And I'm okay. going to put you on hold because Mandy may even have, still have his web address and, uh, some contact information for Bill. And it's an interesting time, isn't it? I mean, never would you have thought that a language that you used in the 60s and 70s and maybe into the 80s would suddenly come back and be in demand simply because the young people don't know how to fix it. So they're relying on people who have done this their entire lives to come in and kind of save the day. And uh, Bill was quite the character. I remember talking to him. It was really amazing. Uh, Carol, do me a favor, since now you've talked to me and you've talked to everybody here on the show, I want you to make sure that you keep us posted about how you became a COBOL cowgirl. If you love the digital lifestyle and love keeping up with all the breaking tech news and security alerts and data breaches so you can tell your friends and family kind of what's going on and 
what to watch out for, we've got you covered with the Commando newsletters. They keep you right up to date, and you can get yours at commando.com, which is K-O-M-A-N-D-O. And on the top, click on the Get the Newsletter button, and it's a double opt-in. So we'll send you an email to make sure that you want the newsletters, and then you got them. We've got also specialty newsletters about Apple and Android Many, many others, including The Current, which is just what it says. It keeps you up to date on what's going on, and there is no advertising in The Current. It is read it just as you get it. And again, that's at commando.com, K-O-M-A-N-D-O.com. Try it out and see if you like it. We believe you will. It's at commando.com, K-O-M-A-N-D-O. And if you've ever wondered if the information you give your bank is safe, and what about auto pay and some of the digital options that banks have now? How safe is it? We'll ask him coming up on Commando on Demand Insider. Lynn in Plano, Texas. Hi there, Lynn. Hi, I am so excited to get to ask this question. It's been bothering me for a number of years, and to get an answer from someone I trust, uh, I'm really looking forward to. So, It seems like every company that I do business with, whether it's a bank or credit card, insurance, uh, utility, just any business, they want two things out of me, and they tout how safe it is and wonderful for me. And that (laughs) is they want want me to uh, uh, go paperless. Of course. I can understand because it saves them money. Exactly. Uh, And they want me to sign up for auto pay. So... I'm concerned because, A, I don't want my credit card or my banking credentials out there anywhere, right. truthfully. And then I've already experienced, uh, I can't even tell you how many breaches of companies uh, for my information, both my passwords or my uh, emails. And my emails have even, email addresses have even shown up on the dark web. So even though I have a password manager, And then um, lastly, it seems like every time I go through the nightmare of getting all that fixed, there is some software or hardware computer crash. (laughs) So all in all, I don't feel good about it, and maybe you can give me some guidance that changes my mind. And then you start all over again. It's so annoying, (laughs) isn't it? Yes. Yes. All right. You're right. The companies want you to go paperless because it's going to save them money. Okay. Uh, they want to, they want you to go on auto pay because then they get their money faster, right? So you're not going to wait right. until the last day. Um, I don't do auto pay. I like to okay. I like to look at my bill every month, okay. And uh, I'm a real stickler when it comes to spending money, Lynn. I mean, really. I mean, um, right now I'm uh, right now I'm building a house, and I know the contractor. I, I'm sure when he gets done with our Zoom calls, he probably hangs up and curses the day that he signed the contract with me. Um, because this past week, I said to him, you, you, you gave me a collection of bills, right? You know what they look like. It's a whole stack. And I said, here's the problem. I picked up the first bill, and the dumpster on the property, uh, you, you say, or they say that they only emptied it once last month, but I'm paying that they... You you charged me that they they emptied it twice, so oh well, uh-huh. well you only should have been charged once. I said well, but you charged me twice. Okay, okay. Right. The porta potty on the job site. Okay, I mean this is what a stickler I am. Okay, there was nobody yeah, on I'm the there was nobody on the job site for two months because of COVID. So why am I paying two months of waste management? I called them up myself, Mr. Contractor, and they said, we'll give you two months worth of credit back. Okay. So I I get what you're saying, right? Okay. So um, if you're going to be putting your credit card in, and I do pay my bills online, I do do that, is that I set up everything the right way. Two-factor authentication, security keys notifications on any transaction or sign in on any of my accounts, I get a text message. Okay. Right. Um, And yes, it's annoying. It's very annoying, but I know exactly what's going on and I can see what's happening with each and every account. Now, 
One of the things that you might want to consider, and I actually have it set up this way, is that if I'm going to be paying a bill that I own, I use a computer that's just dedicated to paying my bills. And I have that set up uh, for our director of finance here at the studios too. The reason why is that if you get a virus or malware or ransomware, whatever it is, it's normally going to come through email or something that you clicked on the website. All right. So we're going to put that on one computer, the computer where you pay the bills. That's all you do. You just pay your bills. Okay. And that's it. So you, of course, you're going to keep both systems updated. You're going to, you know, keep everything online that way. But at the end of the day, that machine isn't going to be compromised because you you've taken extra steps to do it. Also use a reliable VPN. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, ExpressVPN is the one that I use. And so, you know, those steps can, can that's what that's what that's the way I do it. And again, right. I'm a stickler when it comes down to spending money because you know what it you know why can I tell you why Lynn? Because I started this company on a shoestring. I had a, I almost had a car. I mean, I had a car repoed. Okay. Um, I was selling my clothes to pay my rent. So I think that's, this is where my, this personality flaw comes from. Okay. (laughs) Is that I never want to go back there. That was, there were some bad, dark times, but I believed in what I was doing. Right. So it was worth it. And thank God and I've been blessed and it has paid off and I get to help you and a whole bunch of people. Um, but consider doing it that way. If, if it really makes you feel uncomfortable, then we have a tip on our website on how to set up a, set up a system that's all you're going to do. It doesn't have to be a $2,000 computer either. Just get yourself a clunker of a new laptop and set it up because you know what? You're not going to be looking at your pictures. You're not going to be doing anything else with it. You're just going to be paying some bills online. This is something that you may have never thought of. Odds are someone, someone had your phone number before you got your phone number. And one of that person was a celebrity and an entrepreneur whose name is, well, pretty much known by everyone here in America and probably around the world. And every single day for the last two years, you get at least three phone calls for this person. And that person is Elon Musk. So welcome to Lindsay World's. Uh, Lindsay is a 25-year-old skincare consultant. She works at Sephora in San Jose. Hey, Lindsay, thanks so much for being here with us. Now, when you started getting all these phone calls and texts for Elon Musk, did you actually know who he was? Initially, no. Um, It started when I was in high school, consumed with homework. I didn't really pay attention much, so my mom (laughs) had to explain who he was. You know, that is so funny. So you sent along some messages and I took a look at the um, took a look at them on the Google Drive. Um, mm-hmm. The reporter in Russia wanted to interview him. And you're always so nice, by the way. I mean, I'm, oh, you're, thank you. You, like, you write him back. You're like, this is an Elon Musk, but thank you so much. And uh, I wish I was Elon or I could be, but I'm not. And then there was this guy in South Africa that wanted to buy a thousand cyber trucks. Um, mm-hmm. The Disney executive... <laughs> that wanted to tell Elon that he really likes the self-driving mode. Um, the IRS, I guess, made a call to, which one stands out for you? Um, probably the IRS um, the most, because, I mean, everyone kind of gets nervous about doing stuff wrong with them. So I thought I'd done something wrong, and it took some digging, but I figured out they wanted him and not me. <laughs> You're like, thank you, Elon. <laughs> okay, appreciate oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Very much. <laughs> so how did his phone number get posted online? Because I guess that's how people are finding it now. That's the thing I'm still trying to figure out as well. Um, From what I know, there was originally a property or a condo that he used to have in Palo Alto that the number was attached to. And I think it's just kind of expanded out from there from people finding it. So why didn't you just get a new number? So the reason I didn't get a new number, and I've been asked this quite a bit, is that I'm also um, an aspiring actress. It's what I went to college for. And I have so many resumes and so many connections that are tied to the number that I would lose if I changed it. Or you could get really creative on your voicemail, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, if you're trying to reach Elon Musk, you know, 
that this is not it. But people would be like, what does that have to do with uh, Lindsay? We're <laughs> trying to hire her. What would you do if Elon himself calls and said, hey, listen, I'll buy the number from you? Oh, gosh, I am. Um, I would pretty much just say I'd really rather just keep it if you could just remove the listings from online because I've tried to do that. And they said the listings aren't under myself, even though I own the number. So if he could take them down, that would be the best solution for me. (laughs) Well, I heard that he does listen to the show, so maybe he'll take this advice. Um, One last question, Lindsay. What kind of car do you drive? Mm -hmm. I currently drive a Ford Fiesta. <laughs> okay. I was thinking maybe there was like a some something going on with a Tesla and all that. Lindsay, what a great story about, I guess you'd say, Miss Digits. And it's also nice to hear that you're not, ready for it, phony. <laughs> okay, that was bad. She does actually answer every single call and text message. I don't think I would have the wherewithal to do that. Um, Every single person. No, and she's so nice when she does. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. You get these podcasts delivered to your device automatically every time. To do that, just go to your favorite podcast player, Android or Apple, and search for K-O-M-A-N-D-O. Once you find us, there's a Command On Demand podcast, and then don't forget the Consumer Tech Update podcast, which is where you get all the latest news every Monday through Friday. And we thank you again. We'll see you next time on Commando On Demand. In a small physics laboratory in Australia, researchers have achieved the fastest internet speed ever. Imagine transferring a thousand HD Hollywood movies in a single second. Fewer than three decades ago, only large businesses could afford what was then called the T1 line. It gave them internet speeds of 1.44 megabits per second. Today, even the slowest service in American homes is 30 to 50 times faster. And many homes enjoy even faster speeds, 3 to 500 megabits, not to mention home gigabit service that's speeding across America. Okay, back to Australia. They've reached a staggering internet speed of 44.2 terabits per second. A terabit is 1,000 times that of a gigabit. Very soon, even your gigabit line will be considered extremely slow. I'm Kim Commando.